Photography captures moments. It can also give us a window on a time in our past. The book, Look Into My Eyes, Nuevo Mexicano's Por Vida, features photographs by Kevin Bubrisky from the early 1980s in northern New Mexico. Mr. Bubrisky has taken photographs around the world in countries like India, Tibet, Bangladesh, and Syria. And he sat down earlier this year with our correspondent, Gwyneth Dolan, to talk about the power of photography and how he approached his work in northern New Mexico. Kevin Bubrisky, thank you so much for being with us today. It's great to be back in Albuquerque. I, I haven't been out here in quite a while, and, uh, and it uh, feels new and different, and yet the same as well. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you here to talk about your book, Look Into My Eyes. This is just out from the Museum of New Mexico Press, and it is a collection of photographs uh, that you took between 1981 and 1983 in northern New Mexico. But you're from the Northeast. What brought you to Santa Fe? I, um, I was in the Peace Corps in Nepal, and after my four years in Nepal, I wanted to do photography and I, ideally be a filmmaker. And uh, someone at the Smithsonian said, go to Santa Fe, study at the Anthropology Film Center, and if you do well, you know, maybe you could do something back here with us. So I, I, uh, I, I, I didn't get my driver's license until, you know, 1980 at the tail end of 1980 and bought an old French Renault and learned how to drive it and um, learned how to drive it as I went from Massachusetts to Pennsylvania, out through uh, Oklahoma and eventually to New Mexico and uh, enrolled at the Anthropology Film Center, Canyon Road, Santa Fe. And that's, uh, that was my introduction to New Mexico and then stayed uh, for over two years. And so your book really in some ways is a a snapshot of a, of a period in mm -hmm. time in the early mm -hmm. 80s there. You know, we look at the hairstyles on these women mm -hmm. and we look at the, the collars on the men, the cars, the lowrider bicycles, and we're taken back to that time. But beyond that, what do you think this collection of images still says to us now about New Mexico that's still current and relevant? I think that um, you can talk about the hairstyles and the vintage cars and the, the little steering wheels on the lowrider bicycle, but, um, but beyond that, I think it's about connection. There's a lot of, there's a sense of connection, the, the picture of the young woman on the cover looking directly into the lens, and that's a lot of what I do with photography. It's like, it's okay to look into the lens. This is not a candid image. This is, you're aware of me stepping into your world. And, um, and so there's the intimacy of my encounter of, with everybody who's pictured here. But then there's a connection and sense of intimacy within the frame of boyfriend and girlfriend, or girls hanging out together, checking out the guys, guys hanging out together, checking out the girls. And that's, I don't think that's changed. Um, that's a common denominator. And yeah, the, the way the hairstyle is, or the pants or the shirts, that all changes, but I think the sense of community and identity is, um, is the same. You know, we're all photographers now. Mm. We've all got phones mm. and other devices yeah. that yeah. take pictures all the time. And we all take so many photographs of people looking deeply uncomfortable. <laughs> and you manage to capture people, I mean, they have clothes on, but they feel almost bare. You know, they're giving you a very, um, close and unguarded gaze. How do you get them to do that? I, um, I'm not sure. You know, someone, I posted one of the photos on social media on Instagram a few days ago, and somebody from Nepal wrote and said, you know, people don't look at the camera that way anymore. And I, I said, why? Well, maybe they don't because there are so many cameras and so many iPhones, so many Samsung galaxies in people's pockets. And so there's a casualness to the encounter, but, um, but even I use the iPhone every day and I photograph people and I wait for that moment of connection. And I think that that's what makes a photograph endure um, is to really settle and to really decide that you're dedicated and committed to making an interesting image. And then um, it doesn't matter whether it's a big view camera on a tripod or a little handheld smartphone, you can have that power in the image. So I think that, that um, yeah, that's timeless. And it's a matter of attention. It's like before photography, painters would sit with a subject and would take days to paint someone. And so all that thought that goes into it, but with the camera, you have that instant moment. And, 
And so it's about establishing that sense of um, encounter where the lens is like an equal sign and who's in front and who's behind. There's common, a common ground between the two. You did some work at the penitentiary uh, in Santa Fe, the mm -hmm. state pen up there. Did you find that common ground with the inmates when you were working with them? Yes, I, um, I was there for a few events. There was a powwow that um, I was invited to. A, a friend of mine, Steve Long, was, I can't remember what his official title was, but he brought me in a few times um, to the powwow. There was a weightlifting competition I was photographing. And then I worked uh, through, um, I was able to bring my view camera there with Polaroid uh, positive negative instant film. And I was able to teach photography to several of the, the residents there. And, um, and it was really interesting. It was very collaborative. And, and of course, with a view camera on a tripod, nothing is spontaneous. And so uh, everything was, care you know, people in front of the camera carefully placed, carefully posed. And, um, and it, was, it was a really wonderful collaboration. Uh, but that was quite a while ago. And you know, at some point, I'll have to retrieve those images. You know, you mentioned that you were working at the pen with this view camera, an enormous mm. thing, and a tripod, mm. and a you know black shade cloth yeah, over it. Exactly, could have been looked like the 1800s. And now you're snapping pictures with your iPhone. How is it different for you using digital cameras, whether it's your phone or a digital SLR? The biggest problem I find is I, um, I, I'm a curious person, even in, at this point in my life. I, I'm very uh, almost childlike in my curiosity, and I think many people are. If they're a writer or a poet or a painter, they have this uh, capacity and enthusiasm about doing their work. So um, I feel that way as well. And so now with digital media, I shoot so many images. Um, I have you know, I have 128 gigs on my iPhone, and it's always kind of getting up to the upper levels. And, um, and then I, you know, what I find is that I don't have time to, to properly edit my work. And so I just plug things into a drive, and I just pour all the images into an external hard drive. And then when I get time, uh, then I, I go back and go, oh, that's what that looked like. I think the New Mexico book is very much a case of that as well, where, um, in 1984, I went back to Nepal and I started doing a very long-term project there. So this work finished in 1983 and I, I never really put it together. Um, the original book dummy was done by a friend, Marilyn Garcia. We were close friends um, when I lived here. And so the sequencing in this book was pretty much done by Marilyn and by me back in 1983. And then it went onto a shelf and, um, and I got busy with other things. So that, that's kind of the difficulty with my work, is to, um, to keep moving it along to where it needs to get to. You mentioned you'd done work in, in Nepal, and, and you have done work in er areas all over the world, Tunisia, mm -hmm. Cuba, mm -hmm. Uzbekistan, Syria, Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, is there something so exotic about New Mexico that it belongs in that list? Definitely, without question. Um, you know, last I was here in summer of 2014. I took the road from Santa Fe to Española through Truchas, and I can't think of the other um, Mora and you know the high road to Taos. It was just like stepping back in time in some ways, you know, um, and just beautiful and and magical and the light. Um, but I'm a tourist in my backyard in Vermont. If there's a fresh snowfall or a rainstorm or it's a sunny day or it's spring or uh, fall, you know, I, I look at my own backyard with that same excitement and enthusiasm. That's what I try and bring to my students as well. Um, you know, I may be three times as old as my students where I teach at Green Mountain College in Vermont, but, um, but I, I, sometimes I don't see that level of curiosity in them. And so, yeah, New Mexico's interesting. My backyard is interesting. Uzbekistan is. It's all really um, a matter of, of being open to what, what's there. We only have about a, a minute left. Uh -huh. You've been here for, for a couple days. What have you noticed? Uh, what have you observed that strikes you as different from the last time 
You were here from the 80s when you took these. Right. I think um, I tried to go to San Gabriel Park yesterday. I had a very little piece of time, and I couldn't find how to get in there because uh, I wanted to see if people were there and what they looked like and what the place looked like. Uh, and then I, this earlier today, I went to the Petroglyph National Monument, and I never went there when I lived here earlier. And I was just impressed with the encroachment of sort of suburban housing. So you've got this ancient site with petroglyph social media from half a millennium ago, and then right next door you have suburban modern housing. So I think that's what's changed is the, the growth of the city over the past 33 years. Kevin Bubrisky, thank you so much for being with us, and we hope that your photographs are as long-lasting as those petroglyphs. Oh, thank you, Gwyneth. That's very generous of you.